morning, everyone. Thank, when I say everyone, the nine of you. So, <laughs> we could make this a lot more intimate if we just all sit down here and chat. But anyway, thank you for giving me your time. My name is... Well, my name is Matt Stevens. I hadn't forgotten that bit, to be fair. It was when I pressed this button, I quite expected this to happen. Right, SATA UK Limited. I'm representing them today. Um, SATA UK are a subsidiary of a company called SATA GmbH based in Kornvestheim in Germany. Um, as you can see from the slide, SATA were formed in 1907 and they were called then Sanitaria. And in fact, they produced medical equipment. And there's actually one particular product that is still in our product range, which is a tiny cleaning needle for cleaning out nozzles on spray guns. So the company was formed in 1907 um, they didn't actually become SATA until 1914 and didn't produce their first spray gun in, until 1925. But since then, SATA have dedicated themselves to not just being a manufacturer and making spray guns, but a company that are being innovative and trying to develop new and better ways of applying wet coatings to cars, ships, aeroplanes, whatever you want. So <clears throat> my involvement personally was that um, up until 1980, SATA had no presence in the UK. But then my then boss owned a company called Minden Motor Company, and we ran um, a BMW dealership and I was a mechanic there. We won the contract to repair all the bodywork on damaged vehicles coming into the UK from Harwich. To do that, we then got SATA equipment in because that was German, the BMW, and so on. The net result was we became the UK distributor in 1981 of SATA equipment, which is a very long time ago for some of you young people. But I began working with SATA I continued all the way through, and in fact, <coughs> I set up SATA UK Limited in 2006 and became the MD. So between 1981 and 2006, I was working within the organisations, but eventually became the MD in 2006. Since then, we've developed the market in the UK very nicely with the support of Germany. Um, and it's fantastic for me to have only ever worked with one brand. A bit boring, but it, 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 it's good. But anyway, um, along that path, SATA pride themselves in having developed um, products that they were the first, the innovative products. They were the first people to develop the elliptical um, air cap holes, a two-part um, air cap system the very first ever digital gauge built into a spray gun. Now we patented that or developed that in, I believe, 2001. And interestingly, one of my competitors, yet last week, brought their first one out. So we're 20 odd years ahead of the game. So yeah, SATA has always been very much the trendsetter in the industry. As we can see there, a relatively small company, only 288 employees, um, and, and, we're, and we're supplying more than 100 different markets. We turn over in excess of 92 million euros. That's not the UK, by the way. <laughs> um, when I set up in 2006, I recognise, as we recognise even more urgently now, is that we weren't getting young people coming into the industry. And my German colleague said to me, Matt, what are you going to do to change that? What can you do with SATA UK that's different? 
Well, the first thing I did was in 2007, and I approached all the colleges across the UK that pro were providing refinished training. And in the end, we ended up with approximately 40, 42 colleges that we equipped free of charge with SARTA equipment. And then to support that, my team of guys on the road would then go into the colleges a couple of times a year and basically do little presentations and work with the students within these colleges. Unfortunately, many of those colleges decided that doing refinished training was too expensive because the materials, the equipment, and when they've got land and they've got staff, it's very much easier to do hairdressing or, or something of that nature. That said, we've still got kind of about 18 colleges now that we work with on a, on a pretty much a, a weekly, monthly basis. Even today, the guys from Leicester College were here um, and we've got a very close relationship. So that's what we're trying to do for the educational side. But the other problem that we have as a manufacturer is people look at us and say, yeah, they make these spray guns and they're just trying to sell them, which is true. But we want to work with body shops and show body shops that if you use the right tools with the right process, then it's going to save you money, which in turn makes you money. So <clears throat> what we decided to do was to not employ guys in suits and ties going knocking on the door. We wanted to employ technicians that fully understood the whole process of car body repair. So I've now got three dedicated technicians. They've all got Mercedes vans, which there they are, and me. Um, but that's our place in Newmarket. And these guys um, have got these vans. And as you can see, they've got everything in there, filter regulators, gun cleaners, spray guns, everything. And on top of that, they've got drawers full of spare parts. So in the event of us visiting a body shop and the spray gun doesn't work or it's got a problem, we fix it. We don't charge for it, we fix it because we want to show, and we have done for the last 15 years, that we value our customers 100%. So these guys are out there, they'll go to a body shop and they'll spend all day there if the company will allow it. Sometimes the boss will say, oh, I don't want you standing around talking, and we don't. We put our overalls on and say, what's the next job? And we'll do that job with you. And on, on, on the back of that, We've now got a software program so that we can record every single job we do. It's, it's quite a complicated thing, but we can record everything. And at the end of the day, we can go to the manager and say, there you are. That's how much material we didn't use today. And that's how much it worked out today. And if you multiply that by 52 weeks of the year, we've just saved you 25,000 pounds, as an example. But if you want to make that saving, you need this equipment and you need this process. The equipment's gonna cost you 5,000 pounds. But if you're gonna make 25 grand, and, and that's how we're doing it. So we're working with people via these vans and IT to make it work. Now, <clears throat> once we had this situation, um, it was great, but we wanted more. So within that building you see there, across the top, we've got a training centre as well. So we can have distributors in, we can have end users in, we can have you know, youngsters in, and, and basically show them every part of our range. So, <clears throat> for us, that's good. I've already mentioned, prior to putting this uh, slide up, that. For us, distribution is very important. Um, we want to conduct product demonstrations with their customers, but we need the introductions. Um, we do training courses. Um, the distribution network we have all have to meet certain criteria, so we don't supply everyone, because then you just get crazy situations with costs. Um, because we've got our new building, which we moved into uh, beginning of 2021, 
we do next day delivery for all our supplies to our distributors and also we have a web shop and the web shop doesn't allow you to buy a spray gun but it does allow you to buy spare parts so if your spray, spray gun were to fail while you're working go on the site go into the parts breakdowns select the product pay for it on your debit credit or paypal and it'll arrive next day so we're not quite amazon but we're we're, we're kind of getting there um and you know we stock in excess of a thousand products at our place in the uk the web shop as i've just said allows end users to purchase spare parts accessories um, it saves work for the dealers because for them ordering small value items is not always easy and you've got the parts breakdowns available now the last thing on there is sometimes the most exciting is we offer the custom design tool now <clears throat> our range of spray guns the 5000 and the 5500 <clears throat> um, we've got a portal and I can't access it for you right now because of the internet connection here but it means that you can get a template of the spray gun and then you can put any image you want onto that spray gun on both sides um, and it means your spray gun is totally bespoke to you. Now, the cost of that is, is, is not a great deal, but it means that you can make your own spray gun. Uh, I mean, my son who works with me, I said, there's, a, there's a, a free of charge one for you, because you're my son. And he did one, but he did it in black and white, like black and white photos, his girlfriend, his mum, his gran, his whatever, his mates playing football, and it's just fantastic. Um, so it's, wor it's, wor it's worth a look. Um, we also do, once a year, um, our own custom design gun. And for me, I know my sales will go like that because everyone loves something a bit different. So that's what we do. Um, <clears throat> now, a little bit more about the fact that Sartre are known as the spray gun manufacturer. Yes, that's our core business, 100%. But whenever we're talking about spray guns, however good the spray gun is, it won't be any good if you haven't got the right compressed air or the right quantity of it. Um, you need to have filtration. You need to understand why you have filtration, why you have regulation, because these are a couple of examples that we have. And one of the other things about SART is they think about what they're doing. Because, yeah, you can filter air, make it cleaner, that's fantastic. But what we're really saying here is why do we have three stages? Because we take out 5 micron, 0 0.01 micron, and eventually we're talking about charcoal filters. <clears throat> no point in having filters if you don't change them. The same as your car or anything else. So we even put little timers on there and when you install that, you press those buttons and they will slowly change colour, red from bottom to top, so that you instantly can look over and say, I ought to change those. The other thing is we have multiple gauges and they work on the um, differential pressure principle so that that actually tells you if the first stage filter is contaminated heavily, what that's doing is reducing the airflow, which means here we have the true inlet pressure, but this one will be showing a lower pressure because the air can't get through the contaminated filters. Now, to me, that is extremely important because it means that a painter can immediately look over at his filter regulator that's mounted inside the boom and see there's a problem. It's not a case of having an expert in and checking it, is there for you to see. So again, very, very important. You know, these, if you look at these in comparison to other filters on the market, the, the, the physical size of that, you know, the elements are like this. They're not tiny, tiny ones because a small element will basically get contaminated quicker. Again, we have a fully automatic drain system because water will always be 
um, happening within our compressed air system. You haven't got to manually do that to drain it off. You literally allow it to happen. Um, there's not much else like it on the market. So again, to get the best from a spray gun, the first thing you need is clean, compressed air and a sufficient quantity of it. Because again, if you've not got enough air, however good your gun is, it's not gonna work. Um, because at this point, although we are spray gun manufacturers and we like to think our spray guns are the best, the reality is a spray gun is only as good as the painter behind it. Because I'm actually a qualified motor mechanic by trade. I can look under a bonnet of a car and I could teach someone to change a, a, an oil filter, air filter and so on. And they could service a car. But when it comes to painting, I could give a guy the best paint spray gun in the world, the best paint, the best spray booth, the best filters, but he won't be able to paint. He might be lucky and he can get away with it, but essentially, to me, painting is an art form more than a, um, a, a practical sort of thing. You've got to know what you're doing, and, and that's so important to me. So everything we talk about, we're also relying on the painter being very capable, knowing what to do, how to do it, and when to do it. So, yeah, once we've got compressed air available, then <clears throat> we can then look at knowing how much compressed air we've got, understanding air pressure and volume. Lots of people think if they've got loads of pressure, they haven't got a problem. But pressure and volume are interlinked and you need to have volume because remember, you could go to Halfords and buy a little mini compressor to pump up your tires and that would give you a thousand PSI, but no volume, so you couldn't spray with it. What you need is, <coughs> a, um, a, with, with an HVLP spray gun, about 15 CFM. So again, you really need a three-phase compressor, not a little single phase. What we do is, at the spray gun, you can either have an analog gauge, an inbuilt digital gauge, designed 20 odd years ago, or a retrofit, gauge which allows you to use one digital gauge on a whole host of different spray guns. <clears throat> Again, when do we adjust the air pressure? Always do your adjustments here because that's a diaphragm based system and your very fine adjustments on the gun. Because again, a, a subject people don't think about, when you're atomizing air, the velocity of the air makes a difference. So if you try to turn, the, leave the pressure here very high, let's say 80 PSI, but you only want two bar or 30 PSI there, so you use this cheetah valve to turn it down, it's a bit like a garden hose, and you put your thumb over the edge, you're making the hole smaller, so it's going further, faster. We don't want that with a spray gun because we want this to be a soft breakup of air. So what you should be doing is making sure the adjustment is done here and then all you have here is a tiny adjustment, whether you're using base coat, clear coat or whatever. <clears throat> Once we've got clean air, it's got to be clean enough to breathe as well. And again, every painter should have an air-fed mask. From my perspective, he always wants a hood, a full face mask with a hood, because that protects him from just about any thing that's going on in the spray booth. If you're selecting breathing equipment, again, you need to have some form of filtration on your belt unit that's designed to take out any vapors or anything of that nature, because the two-stage filter will only take out particular. So essentially, <clears throat> once we've got the painters all safe, um, they're ready for painting. <clears throat> what we do is a disposable pot system. I'm not sure if any of you have seen them. <clears throat> essentially, it means that you're not using as much solvents for cleaning, even though it's a plastic device. So you could argue it's not environmentally friendly 
but believe you me, we've done a lot of research and we're comfortable where we are with it. Um, once installed, we have dispensers, we do something called coins and more, so every pot you use, you get a report, a bit like Tesco's club cards. Um, and we're ready to go, and then we just need spray guns, which is our core products. Again, as you can see, we do um, a range, design each time for a specific task. The top two there are the X5500. They can be digital or without digital. But these rings on the air cap tell you whether it's HVLP technology or RP. And <clears throat> we haven't got time to talk about that today, but essentially, in the UK marketplace, generally speaking, HVLP is for base code application and RP is for clear code application. But before all that happens, we need preparation. So we've got the JET 100 series, and that's designed specifically for primers. And <clears throat> you've all heard this, people say, oh, I just use my own top coat gun, the old one. Why would you do that? Because an old gun is a worn out old gun. And putting primer on, particularly wet on wet primer, is the preparation for the rest of the job. So simply speaking, get a good wet on wet gun, which that is, and the setup in it was designed for wet on wet. We didn't just get a setup, we said, what do we need? We looked at the density of the material, and once we had that, we made sure we had a nozzle set to work with it. We also do the mini jet spray guns, and they're designed originally for, if you like, smart repair work, to coin a phrase. But what we did is take the mini jet, uh, we originally designed, and we made the size of the pat fan much bigger. So you can now get up to 20 centimetres from a mini gun. And because the air consumption is very low, it means your air, your transfer efficiency is very high. And the net result is those guns now are so efficient, if you use those on anything up to a two panel job, you will see appreciable savings when compared with using a, a full size gun. Um, <coughs> again, a little breakdown of, of, of the simplicity of a spray gun. They're not exactly rocket science. Air goes up the middle, which is all the, 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 the blue. It's allowed when the trigger's depressed to then atomize and a bit of paint there. So again, it amazes me how, in, in what a terrible, filthy state some spray guns are. The red bit is the only bit that sees paint. But they come back to me for repair under warranty when they're just caked in paint. People spend a lot of money on them, and why they don't look after them, I never know. To really complement the things that we do, we do overalls, we do um, daylight guns, we do dryers, we do hoses, we do couplings, we do cases to store your valuable guns in. So that really, oops, is my presentation on SASA and what we're doing. Has anybody got any questions about any of that? It's all rather a bit quick. Yeah, so the gentleman said, what pressure would you set the wall regulator at to get the right pressure of the gun? Um, as, as, a, as a general rule, um, depending on a few, a few X factors, but if you've basically got about 60 to 65 PSI at the wall, then by the time you've got to there, because the pressure drop over 10 meters is a little bit, um, and then your air-fed mask will be consuming around six or seven CFM. So yeah, about 60, 65. But what I normally do when I go into a shop is we say, right, okay, hood on, gun, everything set up, plug it in, get them to pull the trigger, looking at the gauge on the gun, and then slowly wind the pressure down until you're about right, and then give it half a turn up. 
because when you're actually painting, you might want to boost it for your, for your clear coat and drop it down a bit for, for your base coat. So, so there we are. Um, but yeah, um, I'm over on the stand over there. So if any of you wanted us to come and see you and do a demonstration, let you have a go with some guns, we'd be like delighted to do so. Okay. Thank you very much indeed.